They may just look sleek and stylish, but Meta's new smart glasses are doing a lot more than blocking UV rays. And the real question is, are we ready for wearable tech to go mainstream? Dr. Jess Galani is here to break down exactly what these glasses are capable of and what they're, if whether they're the future or just a flashy fad. Oh. We're so happy to have you here to talk about yes. this. It feels strange because there was all this hype around them when they yeah. were first announced, and mm -hmm. then I feel like it fizzled out. We didn't hear much. <laughs> Thank after. God. Yeah. So, yeah. so now there's a new announcement that there's a new round of these glasses. Yes. What are they capable of doing now? So now the big deal about them is that they integrate Meta AI chatbot. So you can actually walk around and give a prompt to. You can say, "Hey, Meta." I think that's what you say. I don't actually have a pair, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, you say, hey, Meta, and you're looking at a building. Can you tell me what kind of architectural style that building is? Mm. And then it will give you a generative AI answer, which could be correct or could be not correct, as we know, with AI being an imperfect technology. Completely. And ChatGPT also has been totally dropping the ball lately. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, we're all losing our jobs to this? Okay. <laughs> um, but I also think that we need to focus more on the way that people will truly use this. Because the yeah. architectural history of a building sounds delightful. <laughs> but I see more as though people recording, taking pictures, yeah. all of these things without other people's consent. Yes. Yeah, I think the potential for being intrusive, being inappropriate, is absolutely there. And that was something that was raised as an ethical question when Google Glass was in the marketplace and, you know, kind of in the scene. And that trend really fizzled. It did not go out with a bang. It went out with a whimper. So I kind of wonder who the audience is for these glasses. Yeah. I don't feel like it's me. <laughs> no. It's interesting because we're actually going to have Dr. Katie Stewart on, I believe, tomorrow to talk about how much we all talk to ourselves. Oh. And if we are wearing glasses, we truly are not just talking to ourselves. We're talking to an imaginary person that's built yeah. into technology. And it's just, are we all just going to be walking around not talking to each other? Yeah. I mean, that is a big risk, right? And uh, the idea of having this, because I, I do that all the time. I'm always like talking about my to-do list. Okay, next I have to do this and right. that. Uh, yeah. The idea of being surveilled while that's happening, because these glasses are two-way communicative. Anything that is able to compile our data will do so, and we don't have federal data protection in the United States, other than for medical and educational data. Well, isn't that kind of what we saw with Alexa, that there are yes. some conversations that can be stored in there, yeah. and you have to kind of go in and alter some of the settings? So yeah. we're, still like, uh, we're still trying to figure this all out together. Yeah, and I don't think that you know, the companies are thinking about our privacy. They're thinking about how can we better sell things to this person? So they're using the data that we feed to it to better market things to us and to make money off of the advertising that they get from that marketing. I see. And I'm thinking about where this all started because in my head it is the Fitbit. Yeah. From what we yeah. just wanted mm -hmm. to track our steps. <laughs> we didn't want to track our thoughts. Yeah. And then we kind of continued to grow on with the Apple Watch. Now we're wearing yeah. them on our head. Do you truly think that this is a trend that's going to catch on? Are we about to be robots, Jess? Just I tell us. I think that there is a very limited market for these. I think that the technologies are always embedded with the values of the people who invented them. And I don't see this as something that a lot of us want. Most people I know want to pull back from the internet. They don't want to have in a literal lens through which they access the internet on their face all the time. <laughs> I was just listening to uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was on a podcast recently and he he said that every, you know, we were just talking about every generation is scared of something else and he, yeah. he mentioned this about AI. He said AI exi has existed for a long yeah, time yes, in other worlds yeah. in you know in in the scientific yeah. and mathematical mm -hmm. worlds and it's just now becoming so mainstream. Yeah. We don't know how to respond and use it. Yeah, I think that is a great point and I think the broad category of what counts as AI is something that there's not strong literacy about. So right. people may not understand that a lot of different technologies have integrated aspects of this into them before. So we are familiar with it, but in terms of this generative AI and the ability to like ask questions as we're moving about the world, I think that is something that feels a little creepy and, and unfamiliar. And, yes. pa and parasocial. Yeah. We just continue yeah. to pull away from the people that we should actually be having these face-to-face -face conversations. And yeah. let's look at Mark Zuckerberg here. These are not cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Mark, uh, You want them to be a little bit more stylish. Uh, yeah. Can we get a leopard frame? Like, <laughs> mark yeah. it to the right audience. Yeah. Uh, As totally. always, so much. Thank really you. good. Dr. Jess will be uh, part of an upcoming panel discussing social media and its impact on young people. It's happening October 27th at the Pitt. 
Greensburg campus and it's free and open to the public. We're gonna have more information on our website. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.